Hello, you're here with Data Science Teacher Brandon, and today we're going to go over uh, the process of fine-tuning a Transformers model for NLP classification, and a Transformers is under the Hugging Faces library, okay? And so this would be uh, different different models like Google Electra, Distilbert, Roberta, Alberta, uh, and T5, what we'll go through today. Process is similar for all of them, I just wanted to test and see really kind of how much we could fine tune it, only tuning it uh, for three uh, epochs, okay? Uh, so so quite, quite, still takes a while for sure, uh, but still goes quite quickly, okay? In, in comparison to probably training it from scratch, okay? So here we're importing TensorFlow or Transformers data sets just to work with the, the data today, um, standard data science libraries. So to start highlighting this right now, I tried this with TensorFlow and I couldn't get it to work with TensorFlow. So I had to use the, I guess, historical, the uh, the original uh, Hugging Faces library, just the PyTorch right here. So the TensorFlow implementation yeah. just didn't seem to be as smooth. I wasn't able to get things to train properly. And I ended up using the, with a little bit more coding to do the PyTorch one, but it works well. Uh, so just importing some things to work with the PyTorch today. Uh, metrics and then sketcher. So and looking at our GPU to name to get the uh, name of this to make sure that we're using it as we go through our data set today. Uh, so just looking at a, a data set from Hugging Faces, AG News, just nothing really special, but we're going to classify things as either it's world, sports, business, or uh, science and tech. Okay. So there's the different labels here, and you can go to the documentation on the website to find those to confirm that, but. Here, what I'm doing, I just wanted to test a, a pipeline, just a zero shot classification pipeline using BART uh, in uh, the Facebook BART to do uh, this classification and see how good we get just with defaults. And so uh, run those in there. With this, you can give it candidate labels. And so you can say, I want to classify it as world, sports, business, or tech. And so let's see how it does just out of the, <laughs> out of the, out of the vault. And so you can see here, putting our predictions in coding, put this into a data frame and then making confusion matrix out of that. And you can see here, not the greatest <laughs> at the end of the day. We, we do, we get some rates, but we never get any of this. This would be business and is our world and sports. So we never get any of those correct. It just kind of predicts everything as something else. So really not very good. Everything kind of, it's really kind of heavily, I guess, biased to predicting uh, class three versus the other ones, okay? So let's see if we can do this better with a little fine tuning. Okay, so just 30 epochs, or sorry, uh, batch size of 32, epochs three for everything today. And we're gonna go auto model for sequence classification, importing the Google Electrica, Electrica uh, small discriminator. So this is actually for a binary classification. I wanted to try and see if it could work, but just to see if you could get this to work still for a multi-classification problem uh, and how well you could pre-train this as well. Okay, so doing that for uh, the, model and then for the tokenizer again from auto model and auto tokenizer i'm then going to tokenize the inputs and i'm making sure that i'm returning a pi torch tensors truncating and padding and then for the labels i'm just going to put those into a type a pi torch tensor as well okay with both of those i'm going to put them into the tensorflow data set pulling out the input ids the attention mask and then the labels right here okay and then so train uh, loader right here. So the data loader, so what you do is you, you set up the TensorFlow data set and the loader is kind of giving you, feeding it the, the batch every time, right? So this is what is gonna give us, give us the model of the batches that we're gonna iterate through, okay? And so we do the data loader here. Uh, we get our data loader set up and then we're going to iterate through this. Uh, this is just, we're gonna set our model to evaluation just to look at how it does out of the gate, right? So you can see here, not very good, just like we expected up above. Um, and I'll go through the, the, the loop here and when we're actually training it. And so here doing the optimizers, Adam W, length 10, uh, scheduler here, uh, and optim LR scheduler one cycle linear uh, linear regression, I believe, to get to zero, Lin linear decay, essentially. Optimizer and max learning rates, and then it kind of goes down from there. So really everything is very similar to TensorFlow, if you're more familiar with TensorFlow. It's a little bit more... A little bit more work to do a training loop though in in PyTorch versus TensorFlow, but it's not so bad. Okay, 
um, you have a little bit more control, I guess, in it as well. So we're going to go through the number of epochs, which is just three. We're going to just start a counter for our total loss. And for batches here, we're going to go through the data loader. We're going to get batch and the batch index IDs, which we don't really use. But uh, from the batch, we're going to get inputs attention mask and labels like we put up here you can see we put it in that order one two one two three and so we get those out in the same order and i'm going to set it so that it works with the cuda with the nvidia around i had to run all of these i was able to run i put t uh, t4 gp so you can see here the type that we use t4 gp some of them i was i had to use for the alberta i had to use the v 100 as well okay i wasn't able to get uh, a model to train they're just big models and they weren't able to fit into the ram unless i increased the gpu not i mean for the training speed as well but for the size of my ram i needed to increase the gpu size for that okay yeah. to be able to train uh the albert uh albert okay uh and so here just making sure that i'm activating the cuda as we're training and then putting my models in here and really important that we we're just doing all of them together that's an important step here uh, I'm going to then just do optimizer, zero grand, loss, backward, optimizer, step, scheduler, step. So just counting kind of each one of those, adding them, adding the, I guess, what's learned from this, uh, this output here. Okay. And then getting my total loss. And then for every 10th um, iteration, I'm going to print this, just print out, you know, where I am in the batch. Okay. So we went through this. And so we can see here, evaluate this and we get not a very good model. Uh, we get up to 29%. So better, simply better than less than 1%, uh, but not really that great, truthfully. So, uh, so let's see if we can do better with other models. So we will use Distillbird. This is probably one of the more common models uh, in Hugging Faces. It's, it's really good because it's small. Okay, so it makes this easy as well. Uh, so same thing, distil here I'm using the Distillbird, but I could use the auto model and Distillbird tokenizer. I'm gonna do in tokenizer and doing the same thing of the text padding truncation and returning PyTorch tensors doing a torch tensor for the labels putting both of those sorry the inputs of the input ids and the intention mask is all we need from this input it also has token type ids that we don't need in this in this in this set okay and so labels here okay so then the training train loader and then train loader are that we're getting from this and that that kind of feeds in our data every time okay so here we're setting the cuda activating it putting it into the model and then logits outputs and training it right here and you can see well we didn't get that good off, off out of the gates okay and then now we're going to be training this right here. So optimizer, Adam W, train steps here, and then the scheduler again for the learning rate. Okay, to kind of slowly decrease the learning rate. Acting anything in the CUDA again. So in here, just notice here we're doing the train loop versus the evaluation loop, where we're not we're not applying the gradient descent to the model. Okay, so it's not learning at that point. So here in the training one, and that's really all you have to make sure that you do this before you start training. Just kind of turn it on so it knows what to do. Getting the loss after the model outputs, getting the optimizer, putting the loss, applying it backwards, optimizer, and taking a step for each the optimizer and the scheduler. Putting the loss into the total loss, adding it up, and then printing it out after we go through this, or after every 10 iterations. And we get quite good with this one. So you can see with the evaluation, went up to 96% here, which is really quite good. Really good, strong improvement from that. Uh, and really, this is probably the fastest model to train. Okay. So the same thing for Roberta, nothing really different. Import the model again using auto model for this one. Using auto model for this one, auto tokenizer. Tokenizer inputs, Get the put the label into a tensor put them into a data set and putting the three pieces into here, kind of like a row, I guess they would all be to attach together each row. And then the data loader here, you're putting the data set into that, batches 32, shuffle, and then train loader here, and then making sure that we turn the CUDA on as we do our loop, putting everything into our model. And from there, you can see not the greatest predictions at the end, at the end of the day, okay?
uh, here doing the next one for the loop here, what we're doing is same thing, same thing we did, but now we're now we're doing model dot train uh, that we've seen now, and doing the train here. Let's see what we do on the evaluation after training. Okay, and so this one as well, very good, ninety seven percent. Right, so Roberta did did quite well, but nothing's really different in this. We're just we're going through you know step by step training the model. I found that this process should work in tensorflow but it just was not able to implement it wasn't learning properly it wasn't really improving the score or anything like that so um maybe comment down below if you can figure out if you figured out tensorflow and you're able to train these models in tensorflow or if you have better experiences with pytorch let me know down below okay and i'm curious to see which model did you find worked out worked the best so definitely put put that in your comments below so that we can all kind of learn from each other uh, and then putting the look at the tensorflow, we got ninety seven percent here from the Roberta. So really good. And the last model we looked at is the or not the last model, the second last model we looked at is Alberta or Albert base. So this one's quite a bit bigger. I had to use the the second largest model here, second largest model with high RAM as well to get this to work. Nothing really different here and everything. Everything's the same in the process. You can see it starts off not so good, uh -huh, and then it learns here um, as we go through this. So it learns here. In each this one doing the process and it also gets really good so not quite 97 but very close so probably statistically you know irrelevant in terms of our size and then with the t5 small this one i was able to do with the t4 gpu as well and we can see here so starting off not so good kind of our classic story here doesn't start off well but with a little bit of fine tuning over three epochs we're able to get it up to uh very good score not quite as good with it it's much smaller than the rest of them but 94 percent um for a couple hours of training still but it was not too bad okay so you can see our summary here we have roberta being our best tune model started off as almost the best started off with one of the rest was only 25 percent correct uh which is not the best but they kind of just settling on one class for most of the predictions and then here we can see once we tuned it didn't take very much. We really just, and you can see here that really with a little bit of tuning, we were able to make the model significantly perform significantly better uh, on our classification problems. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to, don't forget to hit like and don't forget to get the hit the like and subscribe button down below. And in the links down below, you'll see links to the code where you can download the code at datasimple.education. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time.